Hallelujah. Glory to God. You're welcome to prayer school one. All right. This is the final class of prayer school one. Um, I want to say that uh, prayer school is not um, ending today. We're going straight to prayer school two. And in prayer school two, we're going to be looking at hearing God's voice. It's going to be five Thursdays of talking about hearing God's voice. We're going to look at it detailly. We're going to my goal is to help everyone that will participate in prayer school too to be able to know how God speaks to them and really, really experience it. So it's going to be a lot of lectures, a lot of question and answer, a lot of praying, and we're going to give you a lot of assignments. I mean, prayer school too, you're going to have a lot of assignments because the assignment will cover you, um, will cover uh, you exercising on some things that will help you to build your sensitivity to be able to know God's voice. All right, so let's have a word of prayer today. I'll still announce that later, um, and then we'll start today. Father, we thank you for the opportunity you've given to us to um, gather online like this and our prayer school. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for giving us light, illumination, understanding. We appreciate you. We give you glory and praise for this. Today, I ask for the spirit of wisdom and revelation to rest upon every hearer in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask, O oh Lord, that a fresh anointing come up, comes upon me. Let your word come out through me, through my thoughts and my words and my, and my, uh, my lips. And let there be the opening of the eyes of everyone to see, our ears to hear, and our hearts to understand. I trust you for miracles today, that you will heal every sick, deliver every oppressed, and give everyone liberty and the blessing of God in Jesus mighty name amen glory to God now today uh, we are going to be looking at the prayer of intercession all right because intercession is very important now just to do a quick cap, cap up on what we've been doing um, in prayer school we have um, looked at prayer and we have defined prayer as a communion that takes place between you and God and in that communion or through that communion, God's needs are met and your needs are met. And we have said that um, the communion part is very important. That's why last week we looked at the prayer of intimacy. We have all these messages still uploaded on Facebook. So you can go back and check them on, also on Instagram. Now, um, we said that there are three needs of God. I mean, our own needs are obvious. We know our needs, our needs for spiritual growth, conformity to Christ our needs for money, for health, for well-being, for favor, for protection, you know, deliverance and all of that. You know, but God's, need, God's needs are, uh, the, the aspect of God's need is what most people don't know anything about. In fact, some people normally ask me, does God have needs? I thought it's God. Yes, he has chosen to create needs for himself. And the number one need of God is you in his presence. God wants you in his presence like he said to me many years ago he said son your presence in my presence makes my day your presence in god's presence makes god god's day so every day you come you come into his presence god is excited god is pleased god finds kind of it kind of finds fulfillment in you coming all right so that's why you should come every day the second need of god is worship god wants our worship but worship is the best that god ever gets is better than the worship of angels, which is the worship of servants. Our own worship is the worship of sons and daughters. Our worship is the worship of kings, because he has made us kings and priests to our God. All right? So that's why God looks for your worship every day. So don't deprive him of your worship. Never let a day end until God gets worship from you. Write that down. Never let a day end until God gets worship from you. The third need of God is intercession, and that's what we're looking at today. God needs intercessors. He needs people that can pray. All right? He needs someone that can stand the gap and pray and make things happen. God needs intercession. Let's read the book of Ezekiel in chapter 22 in verse number 30. Ezekiel chapter 22 in verse number 30. The Bible says, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the edge and stand in gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. 
God is constantly looking for intercessors. Why? One of the reasons why God looks for intercessors is because of certain spiritual laws and principles that God has set in motion. Um, in Psalm 115, the Bible says something very, very powerful there. Verse 16, Psalm 115, verse 16. The Bible says, The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's, but the earth has he given to the children of men. So what has happened is that God gave the earth to us. That's why in Genesis in chapter 1, he said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over everything on earth. So God committed the earth to man. That's why Jesus was told, uh, the devil told Jesus in Luke in chapter 4, he said, the glory and everything on earth has been given to me. Why? Adam ceded it to Satan. All right? By disobeying God. Through his, his, his disobedience, he became a slave of sin. And by becoming a slave of sin, he automatically became a slave of Satan. And so Satan became the God of this world. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Satan became the God of this world. So Satan kind of run the affairs here through human beings by influencing how they think, what they decide for, what they do, what they choose. All right. So he runs the affair. And so many things that are happening here, people will say, oh, why is God allowing this to happen? Because God has committed this place to us. We are the ones in charge. And if you are subject to Satan, Satan will, through you, easily carry out his counsels on earth. But God is also looking for people that will allow his will, all right, to be done on earth. Because he has given the earth to us already. Now, everything belongs to God, but the authority and control of what goes on here has been given to us. And that's why God looks for intercessors. When Jesus was giving us the guide to prayer, to daily prayer, in Matthew chapter 6 from verse 9, the guide to daily prayer, Matthew chapter 6 from verse 9, he said, After this manner therefore pray, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I've said to us that that is worship. Now, if Jesus just wanted us to recite this prayer the way it's written, then there's no way we can recite this for one hour without repeating it. And he already told us that we should not use vain repetition. So this is not just a prayer to recite. Yes, you can recite it. It's okay. All right. But we must understand that the main focus of Christ giving us this guide is as a guide in prayer, not just something to recite. All right. So our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name is worship. Then verse 10 said, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. That's intercession. God wants every one of us, not some. Because you see, um, we have the attitude of saying, oh, I'm called to do this, I'm called to do this. Listen, all of us have a calling to intercession. There are certain callings that are general. One, the call to salvation. We're all called to be saved. There's nobody that is born saved. You have to be saved at one time. You have to give your life to Christ at one time. All right? Then we're all called to be intimate with God. To be worshippers of God and be close to God. God wants, it's a calling. Every one of us has that calling. We're also all called to preach the gospel. Even though there are people who are called to the office of the evangelist among us, all right, in the body of Christ, but every one of us is called to preach the gospel. All right? We're also all called to conform to the image of Christ. Romans in chapter 9, uh, chapter 8, verse 29. He said he wants Jesus to be the firstborn among many brethren by us conforming to him, becoming like him, acting like him in character and in power. So we are all called to that. We are also all called to intercede, to stand the gap on earth for God's kingdom to come into your workplace, into your neighborhood, into where you live, where you operate, where you do business, and that God's will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God's will is not just going to be done on earth because God wants it. No, it's going to be done on earth when somebody, man on earth, who, I mean, who God has committed earth to, when one man on earth agrees with heaven's will to be done on earth, then it will be done. 
All right? And that's very, very important for us to understand. And that's why we are all called to intercession. We are all called to pray. We are all called to the ministry of intercession. In the book of First Timothy, in chapter 2, First Timothy chapter 2, I'll read verse 1 and um, verse 2, if I can read verse 3. Okay, verse 1 to 3. He said, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. So God wants us to pray for all men. All right? For kings, you should pray for kings. Some people believe that, oh, you should not pray for your country. There's no point praying. No. God exhorts us here that we should pray for our nation. We should pray for our leaders, for, for the kings. And then he mentions specifically, and for all that are in authority. All those in authority in the government, in our social circles, in our churches, in our communities, and uh, everywhere. Anywhere there is authority. So we should pray for those who are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. And then verse 3 says, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Verse 4 says, Who will have all men to be, to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. So one of the reasons why God wants us to pray and intercede is because he wants men to be saved. So that becomes one of your key prayer points in intercession. Praying for the salvation of people. God has called you as you're watching today and whatever time you're watching this. As you're watching now, God has called you to intercession. Let me say this to you. If your prayer life is just all about yourself and people you love, then you are having a selfish prayer life. That's what it is. Because in the guide that Jesus gave us, he said, after you have ministered to God, then get into intercession and reach out to others. All right? God wants us to extend his love to people. And the first way of extending love to anyone is to pray for them. I'm telling you. It's to pray for them. Because prayer is very important. Prayer is very powerful. And that's why we need to get into intercession. Everyone is called to pray. Jesus gave the guide to every believer. And he said, we should pray thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You have to pray for the people who are not born again in your office. People who are not born again in your neighborhood. People who are not born again in your family. You need to pray for them, for their salvation. Because you see, this your salvation is not something we should play with at all. Because if that person dies without Christ, without becoming born into God's family, he's not going to go to heaven. You know that if you're born again. And if you're watching and you're not born again, that's the truth. You, for, for you to make it to heaven, good works cannot do it for you. God wants us to have good works quite well, all right? But good works does not qualify you for heaven. What qualifies you for heaven is to be born into God's family. That's why Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said, do I have to go second time into my mother's womb? Jesus said, no, we're not talking about physical birth. Your first birth was by your parents. The second birth is by God. In John chapter 1 verse 12, he said, As many as received him, to them that believed in him, he gave power to become children of God. And in verse 13, he said, Children not born of the will of man, nor the will of flesh, nor blood, but born of God. When Jesus was speaking to Nicodemus in verse 6 of chapter 3, John chapter 3 verse 6, he said, he said, he said that which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. When you're born of human, you are human. But when God gives birth to you, you become born again. You become a new creation in Christ Jesus. That's what qualifies a person for heaven. And you need to pray for people to be saved if you want them to be saved. Hallelujah. Otherwise, you are damning them to hell. Now, in the book of Isaiah, in chapter 62, it says something further about what our intercessory ministry and prayer life should be like. Now, in uh, Isaiah 62, verse 1, it says, For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until the righteousness thereof goes forth, I mean, go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamb that burneth. So it's telling us we have to intercede until we begin to see righteousness stand and salvation stand. Now this one is really focusing on the, the praying for other believers, all right? 
Paul said it in the book of Ephesians. If you look at Ephesians in chapter 6, when he told us about putting on the old armor of the believer. I believe this is the last armor. I'll read from verse 17. He said, and take the element of salvation to cover your head and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, which it was used to fight. But he now said in verse 18 of Ephesians 6, verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And he said, and watching, and intercessor watches, thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So you're supposed to pray for believers around you. You're supposed to pray for your pastor in your church. Most of the time people will say, but does pastor need prayer? Yes, he does. Because there's no way anyone can get to you unless he hits your pastor first. Why? Because the, God uses the pastor is not really the covering, but God is the covering. But God uses the pastor as a covering. That's why the Bible says when you strike the shepherd, then you can scatter the sheep. So before, if, if it's a true pastor, a genuine man of God that is called, God has made him a spiritual covering over your life. Before darkness can reach you, they have to strike him down first. Now they may attempt you, they may tempt you, they may test you, but they cannot get you. Like the children of Israel, when they got to the Red Sea, the Egyptians came from behind. But the Egyptians couldn't touch them. Even though the Egyptians could kill them, could do all those things, the threat was there. Everything looked like, oh, we're going to be killed today. But the Egyptians could not. Why? God took the pillar of cloud and moved it between the Egyptians and the Israelites. And the pillar was darkness to the Egyptians and light to the Israelites. It was fire giving light so they can see their path through the Red Sea. All right? And that's what God does. He uses the pastor as a covering. That's why you need to pray for your pastor. That's why you need to pray for your church. That's why you need to pray for believers in your group. You are in the choir, pray for the people in your, in your, your group. You are in the ushering department, pray for the people in your group. You are in a small prayer group in church, pray for that group. All right? He said, for Zion's sake, that's church. I will not hold my peace. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until we should pray for one another until the righteousness go forth as brightness, until righteousness is shining. Our right standing with God is shining, and then our living the righteous life is also shining. Then he said, until the salvation thereof goes forth like lamp that burns, meaning every reason for which Jesus died, health, prosperity protection begins to manifest in the life of every saint all right god has set you as a watchman that's what i want to tell you in verse 6 and 7 of that same isaiah 62 isaiah 62 verse 6 and 7 he says i have set watchmen upon thy walls o jerusalem which shall never hold their peace day nor night ye that make mention of the lord keep not silence and give him no rest until he establish and he make Jerusalem a praise on the earth. So intercession is supposed to continue until there is establishment and the greatness and the glory of God is emanating in the life of whoever you are praying for. All right. So it's very important for us to understand you are a watchman. God has set you over a Jerusalem. What is your own Jerusalem? You know, when it said we should go out into all the world and preach the gospel, in Acts chapter uh, 1 verse 8, it said, uh, uh, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses for me in Jerusalem, and in Judea, and the Samaria, then the uttermost part of the earth. So everybody has their Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and uttermost part of the earth. Your Jerusalem is your place of existence and influence, where you are originally, your workplace, your neighborhood where you live, all right? Those are your Jerusalem. Those places are for you, Jerusalem. The people in your family, your extended family, your cousins, your uncles, that is your Jerusalem. All right? The community around the, where your church is, is part of your Jerusalem. So we can see your Jerusalem is first your family, your extended family, your cousins, your uncles, and all that. Then people in your workplace, People in the neighborhood where you live and people in the community where your church is. That's your Jerusalem. God wants you to reach out to those people and pray for them every day. Make mention of them in your prayers. It doesn't take time. 
Father, I lift up all the people in my family in the name of Jesus. I lift up those particular that are not saved. I, I pray for all my cousins and uncles and aunties that are not saved also. I lift up all the people in my place of work. You remember uh, Stella? I pray for Stella. I pray for Ernest. I pray for Jude. Jude. Jude needs to be saved. Lord, touch Jude in the name of Jesus. I lift up all my neighbors. The neighbors next door, I don't know their name, Lord, but you know that family. Please, all of them, I'm praying for their salvation. The number one thing you should do in the inter- intercession is pray for people's salvation pray for the salvation of those people lift them up before the lord and then when you have lifted them up before the lord then ask the holy spirit holy spirit help me to intercede for these people and then you begin to pray and then when people have problems pray about it when they are sick pray for their healing when they are oppressed somebody is oppressed in your office pray for the person you heard that somebody didn't come to work because the person was sick pray for their healing you are an intercessor and then you need to also pray for your nation because we saw in that first uh, Timothy that we read, he said we should pray for all men, particularly for kings and those in authority. Pray for our nation. The other day I was asking a couple of people, in, in fact, I've done this a couple of times, I would just ask people, how many people in the last one week have prayed for Nigeria? And you'll be shocked. There are very few people. Sometimes you don't see anybody. And everybody's saying, hey, all this prayer, we're all just praying, 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 praying. We're not taking action. How many people are really praying? That's the truth. How many people are praying? We do prayers in our congregation and all that, but that is not enough. We need to have individuals pray, and all of us need to pray. All right? Yes, we should take more actions. We should go out there and join politics. We should not just sit down and complain. We should go out there and bring change. We should create whatever little change you can create in your community. I believe in all that too, but we should never, ever underestimate the power of prayer. I tell you this, that we are together in this country in oneness today is because prayer has been going on. If not for that, maybe this would have been a war zone. Maybe you and I would have been in one refugee camp or the other. I'll be preaching to you, trying to get you to come to Christ or something. You understand what I'm saying? God wants us to pray for our nation. God wants us to intercede for our land. Now, when it comes to intercession, there are two dimensions to it. When you are praying for somebody else, that's what really intercession is. When you are praying for somebody else, you're praying for your family members, extended family members, colleagues at work, neighbors, you know, your nation, your church, your pastor, and all that. When you are praying for others, that is intercession. But you know that we pray in two ways. There are two ways for praying. Paul said in 1 Corinthians, let me read it. Um, 1 Corinthians in chapter 14, and um, verse 14. He said, For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. Then in verse 15, he said, what is it then? I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with the understanding also. Now, this is praying in tongues, interpreting the prayers. I mean, praying in understanding. All right. And it also means you pray in understanding and then you pray also in tongues. Why do we need to pray in the Spirit? Because whenever we pray in the Spirit, the Bible records it in Romans in chapter 8, which is very, very important. Whenever we pray in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit helps us to pray the mind of God, the will of God, specific will of God for that person. Uh, Even when you're praying for yourself and you start praying in tongues, you're praying, the Holy Spirit is helping you to intercede for you. All right. Now, in Romans in chapter 8, verse 26, the Bible says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. We know what we should pray for, but we do not know as we ought. All right? He said, but the Spirit himself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be altered. I'll get to groanings before we round up today. All right? Verse 27. And he that searcheth the hearts, knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So the Holy Spirit prays for us when we pray in tongues or when we groan. <coughs> Excuse me. So the two dimensions are involved. But whenever he's praying, he's praying the perfect will of God. God gave me an example. A young man is looking for a job and he says, Lord, I want this type of job, this type of job. And then he says, in Jesus' name. Then after that, he says, Holy Spirit, 
I don't know what I should pray for. I said, oh, please help me to pray the details of this prayer. And then he starts praying in tongues. Now, he doesn't understand what he's saying. All right? But in the spirit, the Holy Spirit takes over the prayer. The Holy Spirit knows where the job is. Assuming, now, this is how the Holy Spirit described it to me. He said, now, the job that the young man is looking for is with Mr. Adeleke. Mr. Adeleke is this young man. Let's assume his name is um, um, Paul. All right. Mr. Adeleke is Paul's uncle's friend. All right. But the problem that he says is that Paul's uncle and Paul's dad have a quarrel and they have not resolved it. So for some time, Paul's dad, I've not, I've not been talking to Paul's uncle. So while Paul is praying in tongues, the Holy Spirit prays about reconciliation between Paul's dad and Paul's uncle because it will lead to his job. Paul doesn't know anything about that. He doesn't know where the job is going to come from. He doesn't know anything about that. And then, as he's praying also, the Holy Spirit will pray that God, you know that the job is with Mr. Delicate, so let Paul's uncle request for Paul to come and greet him and let him get talking and let him introduce him to Mr. Delicate. So, after Paul's prayer, two days after, maybe this most senior in the family calls Paul's uncle and Paul's dad and says, look, I don't like what's going on between the two of you. Let's reconcile this. And then they discuss. And the matter was reconciled. All right? And then Paul's uncle now says, ah, how is Paul doing? I've not seen him in some time. You didn't allow him to come and see him because we are fighting Abby. And then he says, okay, I'll tell him to come and see you. You know, he has finished his uh, youth service. Hey, wow, what's his discipline? Oh, he studied architecture. Ah, I have a friend that is looking for some architects in his farm. And he's trying to recruit more. Okay, tell him to come and see him. And then Paul goes to see his uncle. His uncle introduces him to Mr. Delicate, and Paul gets a job. Now, the Holy Spirit knows all of that. You don't know. So when you are praying in tongues, the Holy Spirit helps you to pray the details. That's where intercession starts from. So even when you are praying for yourself, the Holy Spirit does the intercession for you. Then when you are praying for others, as you put up the prayer points, the Holy Spirit will also help you to intercede for them. Now, the Holy Spirit does this intercession through two platforms. The first platform through which the Holy Spirit does intercession is tongues. All right? And that 1 Corinthians in chapter 14 said so. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, it says, If I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth. My understanding may be fruitful, but my spirit is praying. So if your spirit is the one praying, we know the Holy Ghost is the one doing it. How? In Acts of the Apostle chapter 2, verse... Um, I won't read from verse 1 to 4 because of time. Okay, let me just read from verse 1. Acts of the Apostle chapter 2. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come... They were all in, they were all in one accord, with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Verse three, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. Verse four, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So they were speaking, the Holy Spirit was supplying the utterance. As they were speaking, the Holy Spirit was supplying the utterance. So their spirits were speaking in tongues. The Holy Spirit was supplying the utterance for them. That's what speaking in tongues is all about. So when he said, if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, it means the Holy Spirit is supplying the utterance that the, the spirit is praying. So that means the Holy Spirit is supplying the intercession. And there is something so powerful about this intercession. Let me show you the chain. The chain is this. In Romans in chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, you need to see this chain. It's a very powerful chain. Romans in chapter 8, the Bible says something about Jesus Christ. You know, that what he's doing in, uh, on the right hand of the Father on our behalf. All right? Now, in Romans in chapter 8, um, I'll read straight verse 34. Romans chapter 8, verse 34. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is on the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. So Jesus is on the right hand of the Father praying for you and I. So as, as Paul is praying concerning his job, Jesus already did all the prayers that will get Paul the job. 
But that prayer is done in heaven. There must be an agreement to that prayer on earth for it to now become a fulfillment on earth. So Jesus is interceding for you every day, every moment. And that's why when you are praying in tongues or with groanings, this is what happens. John chapter 16. When you're praying in tongues and groanings, John chapter 16, verse 13. Look at what Jesus said. He said, I'll be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come. The Holy Spirit. He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. Meaning the Holy Spirit doesn't speak his own words. He doesn't say his own things. So where does he get what he says? Where does he get the utterance he supplies for you in prayer? Where does he get the utterance to pray the prayers, the intercession he prays for the saints? He gets it from Jesus. The Bible says, but whatsoever he shall hear, whatsoever the Holy Spirit shall hear, that shall he speak and he will show you things to come. So the Holy Spirit takes the prayers that Jesus is praying and supplies the same prayer to you, your spirit. Your spirit prays the same prayer in understanding. The prayer is prayed at, in the presence of God in heaven. The prayer is prayed on earth. There's agreement between heaven and earth concerning that matter. And it is the perfect will of God that they are praying. And so a miracle will happen in your life. A great thing will happen in your life. And the Holy Spirit helps us to do this by either praying in tongues or by groanings. All right. What is groanings? Groanings is size too deep for words. All right. Inarticulate speeches. Groaning is not really a speech per se. It's a sigh. It's like, mm, oh, God. Sometimes when you are praying, you catch the body in prayer and you find yourself making those sounds. You are speaking in tongues. That happens to a lot of us. That's groanings. And when you begin to groan like that, the Holy Spirit is praying for you. The Holy Spirit is taking over the intercession. The Holy Spirit is doing it. There was a time the children of Israel sighed. And the Bible said, because God had their sigh, he remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Exodus in chapter number 2. And immediately God had to go and look for their deliverer. In Exodus chapter 2, the Bible says in verse 23, And it came to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt died. And the children of Israel sighed by the reason of the bondage. And their cry and they, and they cried, and their cry came up to God by the reason of the bondage. And God had their groanings, God had those sighs. And he remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And his covenant was that he was going to bring them out. And the Bible said, God looked to the children of Israel, and God had respect for them. And in chapter 3, God went to look for their deliverer. God hears our groanings. Paul says something about these same groanings in Galatians in chapter 4. So when you begin to have that, you should yield to it. Most of the time people don't yield to it. They try to stop it. No, don't pull back. Yield. Just release yourself because as you groan, you are pushing through in the spirit. In Galatians in chapter 4 verse 19, Paul says something. He said, my little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. When he says in you, he's not talking about in your spirit. He's talking about in your heart, in your mind. Christ has to be formed. For you to be able to behave like Jesus, act like Jesus, Christ has to be formed. For that to happen, it takes some traveling, folks. It takes some traveling. That's why a lot of Christians are living below standard. Because nobody is traveling for anybody. You need to travel for your brother, for your sister. You need to travel for yourself. Groan in the spirit. Travel in the spirit. Give birth. When he was speaking about Jesus Christ, and I'll close with this because our time is up. In the book of Hebrews in chapter 5 verse 7, look at what he said about Jesus. You know, in the book of Luke, when he was recording the experience in the garden of Gethsemane, the Bible said Jesus prayed fervently. He prayed so fervently that the Bible said the sweat coming out from his body was as thick as blood. He didn't say it was blood. Some people misinterpret that to mean that blood was coming out. No. He didn't say it was blood that was coming out. He said the sweat was as thick as blood. 
It was praying so far. So Jesus was in travail. He was in groanings. Hebrews in chapter 5 verse 7. He said, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers with supplications and what? And strong cryings. This strong cry is all weeping cry. It's travail. It's growing. Oh, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Bralida. Gele. When you begin to have those kind of... I wasn't, I wasn't making that... I'm not... I mean, acting. You know, I'm just getting in the spirit. That, that's what normally happens to me when I teach this. All right? So, when you begin to get into that, that strong crying. The Bible said, with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. So, Jesus had to pray himself to resurrection that night at the Garden of Gethsemane. And it took him three hours of deep travail, deep groanings. We need to yield to groanings when we pray. All right? We need to yield to groaning. That's one dimension of intercession that God needs in our time. When you groan, you will birth people into salvation. When you groan, you will birth people into the purposes of God. Those who are struggling with one thing or the other, if saints can just come together and pray and get into travail, those things will change miracles will be born i remember father nash they said father nash went ahead of george whitefield before any, everywhere i mean charles finney charles finney charles uh, g finney everywhere finney went for revival no wonder there was massive transformation salvation of souls you know people change everywhere because father nash will go inside with some people and they will pray for two three four days before finney comes travailing there was one city, there was one town that Finney went to, and he said that town, no evangelists have succeeded there. They, are always, they, they always run them out of time, frustrated. So when he got to that town, all the men gathered. They told their wives and their children to stay back at home. And they sat down there and they started questioning as he was talking. They were querying what he was saying. They were shouting. But the man continued. After 15 minutes, a presence came in there. Conviction came upon the people. The atmosphere changed. Everywhere went quiet. Why? Father Nash and a team of intercessors have been traveling for the salvation of those people for over two weeks. So when Finney got in there, he broke through after 15 minutes. By the time he finished the message, the men, not women, men, all the matured men, all the men in the town were weeping, repenting. And they started leading them to Christ one by one. And they were so awestruck that they stayed in that same place for almost 48 hours. Finney finished that meeting, went to another town. They had to call him back the next morning. That the people you left in that other place, they, they didn't go home. They are still there praying. And they had to come there and encourage them, tell them what to do. And then they went back to their work and they were gloriously saved. The whole town changed. Why? Some people knew how to take God in prayer and travel and birth his will on earth. God is looking for your intercession. It's time to wake up to that. And I believe the spirit of intercession is going to be coming on you. Now, we want to do what we call incubation session. All right. And um, as we start the second prayer school, prayer school two, I'll be announcing when we're going to have incubation time. The incubation time for us is the time we get intercessors to come together and we share certain things and get them to cut the body of the Lord and get them into the spirit of intercession, travail and groanings. That's what incubation time is. If you want to be a part of it, just keep following the prayer school and I will announce when we do it. It's going to be a Saturday. We'll all just come together for about three hours and God is going to birth the spirit of intercession in our spirits. But for now, start interceding the little way you can. And the Lord will bless you. I want to pray for um, anyone that is there that is not born again before I go into questions and answers. So if you have questions, please start writing them as I pray for anyone that is watching that is not born again. And at the end, I'm going to pray for everyone. I'll pray for healing if you are sick. I'll pray for breakthrough. Um, if you are looking for a job, I'm also going to pray for you. And God is going to do amazing things in our lives. But first, let's pray for anyone that is watching who is not born again. If you are watching and you are not born again, God made you to watch this. God made you to stay with it up to now. And I want to pray for you. All right? It's very simple. Salvation is a gift. Jesus already paid for it. You are just to receive it. And when you receive it, God, give, God will give birth to your spirit 
and that change you will experience it and you will know that you're not a child of god if you want that experience put your right hand on your chest say this prayer after me with all your heart say heavenly father i don't want to be a sinner anymore today i take jesus as my lord and my savior i believe he died on the cross for my sins and he was raised from the dead for my salvation I accept the salvation he has come to give me. I receive grace to become a child of God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I pray for you. Father, you have said no one can come except you draw them. I believe you drew these ones. So give birth to their spirit. Wash them in the blood. Cleanse them by your power. Write their names in the book of life. And give them that new creation encounter. In the name of Jesus, walk with them, I pray. And at this moment, I command the hold of Satan over your life to be broken in the name of Jesus. And for your life to be free from his control. Live and serve God faithfully in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, quickly, I need you to do about four things if you give your life to Christ. Number one, I need to pray every day. In the night, before you sleep, in the morning, when you wake up, pray. And when you pray, sing. Sing to God. God likes us singing to him. Number two, get a Bible and start reading. Start reading from the book of Matthew. Read a chapter in the morning and a chapter at night. The word of God is food for our spirit. So as you eat physical food to stay healthy and strong, you also need spiritual food to be able to grow. Number three, look for a good church and join. And if you are in Lagos, please join us at Elohim Tabernacle in Lekki. We are on the sixth junction in Lekki. So you can just put that on Google Maps on Sunday. Join us 7 a.m., one hour service, 7 to 8. And then the second service, 9 to 11, two hours on Sunday. On, th- on Wednesdays also, we meet at 6.30. Please join us. And if you are living outside Nigeria, outside Lagos, please look for a Bible-believing church and join. All right? The other thing I want you to do is to write me. All right? So at the end of this course, an email will be put on the screen. Just write me. Write me. Let me know. All right? Uh, Paul Olashere at hotmail.com. Just write me. Let me know you give your life to Christ. And then go to our website, www.elohimstabernacle.org. We're also going to put that on the screen uh, at the end of the uh, session. And um, go there and look for Christ Foundation Course. It's a series of teaching, 15 minutes to 30 minutes each. So you can do them once every day. 15 minutes, just commit that and just listen and grow. Because there are teachings that will help you to grow. There are basic things that you need to know as a Christian to be strong, to be able to overcome temptation and take possession of the blessings of God for your life. So Christ Foundation calls on www.elohimstabernacle.org. All right. So we're going to be taking questions now. So those of us who have questions about what we have done tonight, I need you to begin to send in your questions now so that we can um, um, reach out and help you answer your questions. Glory be to God in the highest. We give God the praise. So if you have questions, please put them online at the moment and um, let's have those questions coming in. Now I have some questions here. I'm going to start treating immediately. Um, What is the connection between prayer and fasting? Well, basically, prayer is one thing, fasting is another thing. But the two work together. Because when you're fasting, you're supposed to pray. Fasting is humbling ourselves before God and uh, staying away from pleasure and food and sometimes water. All right, Uh, Many times you shouldn't stay away from water, but uh, if you're doing just one day fast, you can stay away from water throughout the whole day. All right, And if you're doing maybe three days fast, but beyond that, you should try and drink water unless the Holy Spirit instructs otherwise. So fasting is a way of humbling ourselves before God to seek His face. What does fasting do to us? Uh, First, what does fasting do to God? It does nothing to God because God is God. Same yesterday, today, and forever. When you fast, What fasting does is that fasting helps your faith to focus on God and be able to receive from Him what you will not be able to receive normally. That's what fasting does. So fasting really changes us and helps us to position better to receive from God. God is more than willing to do whatever you are going to fast about, you know, to uh, about in His presence. He's willing to do it already. But fasting helps you to be able to receive from God. But we need to pray during fasting. Another question here says, 
Why is praying for others important? Well, I've said why is important. God said, I'm looking for a man to stand the gap. He said, but he didn't get any. And I'll tell you this. There's a lot of blessing attached to being an intercessor. God blesses you when you begin to do what pleases him. Because one of the things that God needs is someone to pray. For his kingdom to come and his will to be done. All right. So it's important for us to pray for others. I have also another question here. It says, um, how do you know when you have prayed true? I like this question because I couldn't cover that. Now, when you're praying, uh, particularly interceding, and then you get to praying in tongues. For those who have not been able to pray in tongues, I would say what you should do is just pray and then sing worship and then start declaring the scriptures that you are using in prayer. All right, until you are able to get the gift of uh, praying in tongues, which is meant for everybody, you know, uh, that wants it. Now, so uh, how do you know when you are praying through? When you are praying in tongues, you will know when you are praying through when you get to that point where the burden lifts and you feel peace and joy. Inside your spirit, you sense peace and joy. At that point, you are praying through. Now, what if I'm praying now and I'm praying and praying and praying and I, I don't get to that place of praying through? Yes, you can stop the prayer and pick it up another time and just continue praying in the, in the Holy Spirit on it again. And once the burden comes, try and pray through the second time. If you're not able to pray through, get someone else to join you. Two shall put the flight a thousand. I mean, one shall put the flight a thousand. Two shall put the flight ten thousand. We talked about that last um, two, two weeks ago. So get someone else to join you to pray along. Now, another question here says, um, how can I flow with the Spirit when praying? Ah, how can I flow with the Spirit? It's very simple. Focus on God, all right? You know, um, remove anything that is seen before you go into prayers because sin will actually block your flow with God. All right, Isaiah 59 says, The Lord's hand is not short that he cannot save. Neither is his here door that he cannot hear. He said, but our sins and our iniquities are separated between us and our God, that he will not hear us. And most of the time, really, the truth is this. It's not God that pulls away from you when you sin. It's you that pull away from God when you sin. So remove that. Once you ask for forgiveness, he will forgive you. Even if you cannot remember what you did, just say, Father, for all my wrongs, please forgive me. Cleanse me by the blood. I receive forgiveness now because forgiveness is available. It's already given. By Jesus Christ. Just say, I receive forgiveness now. I receive the cleansing of my heart from dead works. and purging of my heart from dead works to serve the living God. And then start praying. And then if you can pray in the Spirit, start praying in the Spirit. Once you get praying in the Spirit, you'll get into the flow. You'll get into the flow. Alright, another question here says, Why is it that when you pray for yourself, you do not see results? <laughs> I guess this person is saying that when you pray for others, you see results, but when you, don't, when you pray for yourself, you don't see results. Well, the first thing I would say is that um, you cannot say that you don't get results at all, at all when you pray for yourself. Because God has answered many of your prayers. It's just that a lot of times, the prayers that we are yet to see the answers, sometimes we become so concerned and so worked up over, over them that it clouds our mind and makes it to look as if God has never answered any prayer we ever prayed. You know, and that is not so. God answers prayers. God wants to answer your prayer every time. So, uh, why? Well, what I would say is this. Check how you're praying. Look at it again. All right. In prayer school 2, I would look for a time when I will talk about praying your personal prayer points. All right. We're going to look at that. Uh, uh, so, we look at it in details. Because a lot of times when people are praying... They pray, they receive answer in the spirit, but to get the answer to manifest in the physical, they fail at that because they don't know how to fight the fight of faith. All right, so it's important for us to understand um, how to pray and how to pray right and how to pray and receive from God. It's very, very important to get that. Jesus said in Mark chapter 11, verse 24, He said, What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you have received them and you shall have them. And that, that works for us all the time. Now, um, another question here says, how do you handle unanswered prayers? It is very discouraging when this happens. Now, okay. Listen, I'll read a scripture for you. In the book of um, Colossians in chapter 4, 
This is how to handle when prayers are yet to be answered, when they are yet to happen. Verse 2 says, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgivings. What that simply means is that keep praying in tongues and keep declaring the word, but keep giving thanks to God that I have it. I have the answer. I have the answer to my prayer. What normally happens is this. People fail when they start doubting. When there's a little delay, and Satan knows, Satan studies people. And when he knows that if the thing doesn't happen within one week, this one will start doubting. So let's just try and put pressure, you know, and make sure that, uh, you know, he doesn't see anything in one week. After that, he will give up. Don't give up. Keep declaring, I have the answers to my prayer. Father, I thank you because I know I have the answers to my prayers in the name of Jesus. Keep thanking him no matter what it takes. Even when you feel discouraged, still thank him. Even when you find yourself saying the negative things, keep, keep thanking him. You will get to a point where the circumstance and the negativity that, it's, that is trying to drown your faith does not affect you anymore. At that moment, you have climbed in faith above that situation and then you will see the manifestation. And when you see the first result, the second result will be faster. The third will be faster. It gets faster until you become an expert in getting answers as fast as possible. The problem is that most of the time, people don't wait throughout the first test. And the Bible says you count it all your when you're going through the, try, the trying of your faith. He said because when your faith is tried, it works patience. And God knows that patience is the tool that helps you to have consistency in answered prayers. So, basically, what I'll say to us when it comes to answered prayers, make sure you pray right. Make sure you're doing the right thing and then fight the fight of faith, you know, until you have your answers. All right. I think those are the questions I'll be able to take today. Um, this is the last class of this particular uh, prayer school one. Um, next week, we're going to start prayer school two. And this time, we're going to be looking at hearing from God. All right. Our commitment in prayer school two is going to run for five Thursdays. Our commitment in prayer school two is to make sure everyone that joins and listens knows how God speaks to them. And is able to identify, because we're going to cover different ways God speaks to us. And you'll, you'll be able to identify the one that God uses to speak to you. And the ones that are, are common to all, you'll be able to know how to use them effectively to receive from God. And your life will never be the same again. There's nothing like being in the center of God's will for your life. When it comes to marriage, marrying right is very important. When it comes to building career, choosing the right career is very important. When it comes to doing business, doing the right business. Is very important if you know god's will ah your life will be sweet so let's uh, all gather again next week for prayer school two those of us who are registered for prayer school one you can just join us all right um, and if you have friends and family members you like to be a part of prayer school two please tell them to go and register they should use our link for registration on all the platforms um, that are there also i want to say that this saturday we're having a special um, worship uh, program. We call that worship program the Night of the I Am. It's an encounter with God program. It's a program that God wants us to use to come and encounter Him and then receive the prophetic and have the opportunity to worship Him in spirit and truth. So I'm inviting you Saturday, the 3rd of August, 4 p.m. at Elohim's Tabernacle, Lekki, Lagos. Just put Elohim's Tabernacle on your Google Maps and it will bring you to us. All right. Join us 4 p.m. Um, uh, on that Saturday, uh, Victoria Orienze will be leading us specially in worship. It's going to be a wonderful time. And the theme for this Saturday is His presence. There is a dimension of His presence. All right. It, the presence of God is in levels. There is a level that when you can access that place, sickness will die immediately. Affliction will die immediately. Yokes will be broken immediately. We want to see how to do that. So there's going to be teaching about His presence, and then Victor Renze will be re leading us in worship. It's going to be a wonderful time. All right, and the Lord will bless you. We also have a program we want to let you know about. It's called uh, SOT Summer Camp. 
we have a school called the School of Tyrannos where we teach on how to hear God, how to find purpose, how to discover who you are. So we are having a session of that school for children from ages 8 to 17. All right. So and it's starting on the 5th of August. If you want to be a part of it, please look out for our post on it and register and just make your way to Hello Instagram call on that 5th. Uh, classes start at 10 a.m. in the morning and they'll be here till 3 p.m. in the afternoon. It's going to be a wonderful one week of um, learning how to work with God, learning how to um, find purpose, how to uh, walk in the will of God, how to know the voice of God and discovering who you are through identity. And then there'll also be some extra courses on leadership, on um, public speaking and all of that. Praise the Lord. So you are invited to join us for that. And the Lord will bless you abundantly. And those of us who have done School of Tyrannos before, it will be happening in August, August 17th precisely. So all School of Tyrannos alumni, there is um, an alumni um, session, August um, 17th. All right, so I'm going to pray for you now. I want to pray for you. That God will touch you. Now, if you have a special prayer point, please put it on the screen. As soon as I finish praying now, I'll quickly take the special prayer points and pray. All right? So let us pray together. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for sending us your word today and bringing transformation to our lives. I pray for everyone that has been here listening, watching, and everyone that is going to watch the video. The Lord, you will help us to be true intercessors and be able to receive your glory and grace in our lives. In the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone that is trusting for healing right now. I ask that the healing power of Jesus be released to you wherever you are right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke addicts. I command whatever addicts they are, migraine or addicts as a result of whatever situation or circumstance in the body. Stop in the name of Jesus. And whatever the root cause is. I command to stop in the name of Jesus. You spirit of sickness and infirmity and diseases, I bind you. I cast you out in the name of Jesus. Receive healing in the name of Jesus. I see somebody on the bed. You're watching me right now. Your bed. You're a man. Receive healing in your body in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive healing in your body. Receive healing in your ears. Um, right now, in the name of Jesus, I see the Lord touching somebody's ears. In the name of Jesus. And the Lord is also touching someone's ears to be able to hear the voice of God again like you used to have. You lost it, but the Lord says there's a restoration for you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Receive healing. Receive restoration. If you are trusting for a job, I pray that the doors of the land opens for you. In the name of Jesus. And that industry where you're looking for that job, the doors open for you there. In the name of Jesus. May that Receive covering over your life in the name of Jesus. Find that right place to worship where your covering truly is. And stay there in the name of Jesus Christ. I plead the blood of Jesus against all the oppression of Satan against anyone. I destroy it now by the blood. Every handwriting of Satan against you. Every decree made against your life. I counsel by the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus Christ. Be free be set free in jesus mighty name we have prayed all right i'll t quickly take the special prayers someone wants prayer for financial breakthrough come on receive that financial breakthrough now in the name of jesus christ every chain of hardness lack and debt be broken now in the name of jesus christ receive life Someone is praying for business opportunities. Ah, Prayando, Ribika Lostova. I don't know whether you are the only one where you are, but if you are with anybody, join your hand with that person. I will just stretch my hands as joining those hands in faith. And I declare in the name of Jesus 
that from today, by the power and the grace and the favor of the Almighty, connections that you need for your business to blossom, receive them now in the name of Jesus. The doors that need to open, I command by the keys of the house of David, be open in the name of Jesus. Let there be business opportunities now. And let the opportunity, opportunities bear fruit or profit into your life and into your business. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Someone needs God to touch their heart. Put your hand over your heart. Receive the touch of God on your heart now. There's no distance in the spirit. We'll put the hand of God upon your heart. Heart, receive the touch of God and be healed. Be transformed. Be renewed heaviness go depression depart every oppression